find their way to the bus stop. Then once they get to the bus stop, which bus has it come and then getting on to it. And that's a daily challenge, that's, that's their daily life. Uh, footpaths were something that I found at least in that, those stretches, a complete luxury there. So, uh, uh, you know, why I'm doing all this, I think if they have to also negotiate this uh, weather is something that I thought of. I did walk villages, towns, there was uphill, low hill, you know, down slope. Uh, I had people walking with me, you see Fayaz who walked the entire stretch in Palamir with me, which was very exciting. We had good roads, bad roads, again, good for whom, uh, are we talking about vehicles, what about the pedestrians who struggle, and amongst pedestrians, what about those who need, uh, who have specific needs that need to be catered to, is something that I don't think we think about at all. There you are, Anita. I mean, I'm, you're not in that picture, but that's, that's Sinchitu where we met. <laughs> And that video, I must thank uh, IIA Karnataka chat. This was um, so you've seen this uh, uh, game going on here. We played charades, and you're seeing him uh, as a sign language interpreter telling you uh, what I'm saying through sign language. And it was very interesting that. At the end of this, when they finished that game, I would kind of, again, it would hit them hard and I would say, this is the world of those who can't probably hear and speak. And uh, at that school, when I asked how many of you know sign language, I was delighted that one of the girls put her hand up. Both her parents were uh, hearing and speech impaired. And she knew and it was beautiful to hear that her friends also learned because they had to communicate with this girl's uh, uh, mother mother and father. So it was really nice. So these are some of the interactions that I had along the way. And uh, yeah, I think this is a, a problem I faced all along where uh, people in governance refused to come on camera and say things to us. I was at a fire station. It was really nice that uh, 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 I interacted with them. They refused, he refused to respond on camera but he said you can put the camera on you and uh, I will answer. So the questions and the interaction I had with him were what happens during a fire emergency? How does everybody have the same opportunity to evacuate? Uh, how do people with visual impairment know where the fire escape is usually? I mean, they're supposed to know as per norms in a particular way. How do persons with uh, hearing impairment hear, know about the fire alarm that goes on? Uh, and he kept trying to tell me, but you will be with somebody. I said, suppose I am hearing impaired. He said, you will be with somebody. I said, no, I'm alone. Now what? And I kept asking him, and at the end of it, he said, I'm so, you know, uh, uh, educated or made aware at the end of this. So if I'm part of a committee, I will definitely take these things up. And I'm just a fireman now, but I see your point completely. But the sad part was even in Chitur Station, and he said, you know somebody there. They refused to get into a uh, chat on a camera with us. And, uh, and Mark, as Sinha uh, uh, has already mentioned, is the director for the NCEPDP, uh, NCEDP, which is National Center for Employment for Disabled People.
asking about who can help and yes, so she needs, you need to speak to Shalisha after this. So, yeah. And uh, do we have anybody from TVS? No. They call also their right? Yeah. Uh, Mithi Cafe. So we have some of you ಸೋಲಾಪುರ್ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿಂದ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಲೈನ್ ಅಲ್
ನಾನು ಇಲ್ಲಿಂದ ನನ್ನ ಲಗೇಜ್ ನಾನೇ ತಗೊಂಡು ಹೋಗ್ತಾ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಕೂಲಿ ಏರ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಕರ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋದೆ ಬಟ್ ನಾನು ಅಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ಹೋಗೋದಕ್ಕೆ ನನ್ನ ಕೆಲಸ ನನ್ನ ವೀಲ್ ಚೇರ್ ಅಲ್ಲೇ ಕರ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗಬೇಕಾಗಿತ್ತು ಸೊ ಈ ತರ ಈ ಟ್ರೈನ್ ಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಾಗುತ್ತೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಸರಿಯಾದ ಅಕ್ಸೆಸಿಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಇಲ್ಲ ವೀಲ್ ಚೇರ್ ಆಮೇಲೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಈಗ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಹೋಗಿ ಅಂತ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ನಮ್ಮ ಲಗೇಜ್ ಅಲ್ಲ ನಾವು ಅಲ್ಲೇ ಇಡ್ತೇವೆ ಈಗ ನಾನು ಡಿಸೇಬಲ್ ಆಗಿರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ನನ್ನ ಲಗೇಜ್ ನೆಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಹೋಗಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿಟ್ಟು ತಿರ್ಗ ನನ್ನ ಸೀಟ್ ನಾನು ಪರಿಶ್ರಮ ಆಗೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಸೊ ಇದು ನಮ್ಗೆ ಈ ಟ್ರೈನ್ ಈ ತರ ಫೆಸಿಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಅನ್ಕಂಫರ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಡಿಯ <laughs> ಸೊ ಈ ಆರ್ಕಿಟೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇದನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ಒಂದು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಪ್ಲಾನ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಡಿಸೈನ್ಸ್ಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಅನುಕೂಲ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಹೌ ಕೆನ್ ಬಿ ವೀವ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಲ್ ಡಿಸೈನ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಫ್ಯಾಬ್ರಿಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಫ್ಯೂಚರ್ ಕನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಎನ್ಶೋರಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಸಿವಿಟಿ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಅ ಗೋಲ್ ಬಟ್ ಅ ಫಂಡಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಸೈನ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ವಾಟ್ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಿಒ ಎ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಐ ಆನ್ ಬಿಹಾಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಆರ್ಕಿಟೆಕ್ಚರ್ and on the behest of our president uh, architect professor abhay purvai who could not uh, make it today due to his three uh, occupations so he has personally requested Sir, us to be part of it so sorry it can be a little louder yeah uh, on behalf of uh, president of uh, council of architecture uh, i am here uh, to be part of it and uh, enjoy the today's event really uh, it was so uh, interesting to hear the song and uh, it was really wonderful and the dance especially uh, it, it has changed my perception itself and anita reddy madam's introduction was really good and it has saved uh, some of my uh, job of talking about you and i think uh, most of uh, the people here know about you and uh, to represent council we have three here not me alone we have punit sethi he has come all the way from uh, delhi he is there and uh, architect mohan is here so we all three represent council of architecture and we have a uh, lot of uh, young practicing architects here we are all responsible if at all there is any failure we are also responsible for that we have vijay and his wife so in a way you can blame us if we don't uh, fulfill the requirement but uh, the council of architecture has signed an mou with the ministry and as a knowledge partner ministry of social empowerment yeah, and justice, empowerment yeah. and, justice. and uh, we we have signed and we are working as we are working as a knowledge partner and already i think uh, all the architects know and the public also uh, should know that uh, barrier free environment a uh, manual has been already published and circulated to all the state government and the central government and also uh, it is uh, circulated to all the architects schools but now the next step to council is initiated is they are trying to conduct workshops seminars and uh, definitely a participation with the ngos like you uh, uh, your uh, walk for art class itself is architecture class so through this uh, public uh, participation we would like to bring it to the notice of uh, all the public as well but uh, it was very sad to hear our earlier speaker saying that people should know their rights it is our duty to provide they should not ask as a right i think it is our duty to provide this uh, thing uh, all the barrier fair in moment and all the most of the government buildings are we are following and privates are definitely ahead of uh, the government buildings and it is being strictly followed in most of the government buildings these days uh, we have a few amongst us today what can you tell us and our young architects also here about purple highway and how can we as architects design offices for independence and empowerment thank you geeta 
So let us make it inclusive. I am Veena Shinoy with 5.4 in height. I have shoulder length hair which I have tied. I am wearing red bindi and I am wearing white t-shirt with black pant with black shoe with the overcoat of black in color. So empowering as she mentioned, empowering for me is empowering the community, considering people with disability and elderly and enhancing the livelihood of the community, creating barrier-free environment for all and also see to that how we can enhance the sustainable approach for to make this happen in a collaborative approach through partnership with communities, NGOs, government and organizations. As she mentioned, I should also focus on purple hiring. Purple hiring is a terminology used for hiring people with disabilities for a different role at workplaces or different uh, description, job descriptions and profile. So now we have best of the best example, we have emphasis right from 2009, they have 1% of purple hiring they made it as a recruitment pattern where they are hiring 1% uh, of the employees who are from people with disabilities. We have one of the best examples of SAP celebrating 10 years of autism. They are recruiting 3-4% to 4 of their employment for people with disabilities. We also have Vindya Infotech that is Bangalore based organization. They have 35% of their employment from people with disability considering 21 different kinds of disabilities. We have uh, organizations, many organizations, Accenture, they have 32 accessibility centers. And we have uh, IBM, Google, uh, Microsoft. So there are best of the best practices which we can consider and we can have a similar approach having an equity policy at our organization and what we can do for purple hiring. If you see pink hiring, women in the leadership role was a challenge then. Now we could see women representation in different roles. Similar way, we have LGBTIQ as rainbow hiring was a challenge. We see the representation of rainbow hiring in different organizations. So why not I want the future of work should be purple. With more organization considering this and giving recruitment opportunity. So when we are recruiting, we also have to see the Universal design and accessibility as a main, mainstream that as one of the key elements. It should be not okay, we will hire, then we will look for accessibility consideration. It should be uh, giving a mainstream preference to universal design and accessibility. With this, let us together collaborate and create the world where all are inclusive, we are giving respect, welcoming different communities and we can make this happen together. Thank you. Thanks. And I don't know how many more to come. Anyway, we will be part of uh, your cause, always. And uh, as an architect, I think, uh, uh, I, like our friend mentioned that, we are the problems. We have created the problems. We have not addressed these issues at all. And why do we always have to wait for the laws to be mandatory? Why can't uh, we, we all know and uh, it has to be designed in a certain way and uh, we don't do it. And it's time for us to unlearn and relearn. And this goes for all the architects and designers around here. And tell us what empowerment means to you. Absolutely. Um, so I, I'll address the first part of the question and I would like someone else to address the second part because um, yeah, so, you know, at Mitty Cafe, we run cafes that are completely managed by persons with physical, intellectual and psychiatric disabilities. The breakfast you saw today was thanks to yes. them. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm sure you all loved it. It was made with a lot of love by our team. So, um, our cafes are basically a platform, you know, to create that awareness about the cause of disability inclusion. Of course, through our cafes, we um, create a, a platform where people get sustainable livelihoods for persons with disabilities. There's trainings that happen at our cafes. All of our cafes are training centers. And with every cup of tea that they serve, 
we believe that they spread the awareness about the cause of disability inclusion, change people's perceptions about how they view disability, equity, and inclusion themselves. And um, we believe that this is very, very important for us because it is not the number of MITI cafes that can create that difference for the 1.2 billion people with disabilities across the globe. It is when everybody becomes a part of the process of inclusion is when things will change for everyone around us. Like, you know, when we mentioned that, you know, there's purple hiring, there's, uh, there's so much we are doing for accessibility to public spaces, to, uh, I think the first accessibility has to be in people's minds, minds. <laughs> right? Once, once that accessibility happens, everything else will follow oh. very easily. So it is really about breaking those myths about what people think that, you know, others can do, not do. You know, leave your prejudices aside and open your minds and see the magic of abilities which exist in everybody. We have now cafes also um, at the Bangalore International Airport, at the Mumbai International Airport, and very happy to say we also started recently at the Supreme Court of India. Lovely. And, uh, yes. and the cafe was uh, inaugurated by the Chief Justice. Um, the President of India has visited our cafe, really bringing all of the conversation about disability and inclusion to the mainstream. Super. And uh, I really believe that through this, we all can really have a, a world where inclusion is a reality for everyone, empowerment and dignity of life is a reality for everyone. And now talking about what empowerment means, I think I'd really, really want maybe Manjunath. Sure. Yeah? Manjunath? So why don't you share with us what empowerment means? Good morning everybody and uh, thank you for inviting me over here. Actually I work in Mitty Cafe, I work in Bangalore International Airport. I am from Bangalore, I studied in Spastic City of Karnataka and a Priya was teacher. Empowerment, according to me, is starting by taking up different challenges in my life. Right? Like if I am a disabled, I should not believe that I cannot do anything. I can do everything on my own. Now, <laughs> According to me, we can do everything. There's no disabled in the world. Disabled has formal meaning. People are disabled, but people won't, won't find this ability in disabled people. Super. So, Super. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> really the courage to dream, you know, to be able to think that anything is possible. possible. We have Lakshmi over here. Lakshmi uh, cannot hear or speak. She's a single mother of two children. Her two kids are here. Can you all stand up? And, and it is her dream that she will make her children study and one day they will take her on a world tour. So that is yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mitty Cafe, for making our day. I have a question for... I am four and uh, wearing a, uh, a local shirt, having a beard on my face, and so um, wearing a black color pant as well. So um, uh, just um, uh, wanted to let you know that, see, um, so we are a part time for totally inclusive, like we have uh, uh, around 60,000 plus collections and we believe that art has a um, you know uh, power to change something so, right so that is what we believe, we believe in and uh, uh, right from the beginning itself right the, from the uh, you know, building is being uh, constructing so uh, we had uh, thanks to New York and you know uh, emphasis upon foundation for supporting us in terms of um, accessibility benefits now we started thinking about how this space can be inclusive for uh, everyone, right? So that is how this museum uh, became very uh, inclusive in terms of 
uh, uh, physical accessibility, or you know, we are thinking of other aspects also, like you know, uh, in events happening, you know, by like interpreters and digital accessibility, all these things. So that is why it was possibly happened. And generally, what happens is that when um, you know people uh, generally consider the building, and once people with disabilities start visiting, they then think of you know including um, uh, these. Uh, Accessibility features like you know, they, then they'll say no, this is not possible because we all are to be so you know, so that's the usual problem happens. So now with map it was not like that. So we uh, you know started thinking about it right from the beginning and it has uh, uh, happened to uh, be very accessible space. So now how person with disabilities has uh, utilized um, yes of course because uh, you know since it's a museum and art space galleries. So we have to make these spaces also accessible for everyone. So we have many features like that, you know, audio guide, tactile artwork, sign language interpretation videos, and uh, other uh, facilities uh, like, you know, inclusive walkthroughs, ISO walkthroughs, uh, people with neurodivergent people will come and, you know, we take them on, uh, you know, walkthroughs. Uh, so all these things. So, so it was really utilized well and good. And we are just in our 11 months, like, you know, not even one year, uh, you know, since we opened to the public. So we uh, we got very good response. You know, people wants to come here and spend the time. You know, uh, 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 you know they definitely. I mean, other features as well. Like you know, we have a reserve parking area. We have a wheelchair. So people happily utilize this space, and you know, felt they are very accessible. Because I, I could uh, uh, also I also heard from uh, one of the visual impact. I mean, visual disability visitor that he never seen these kind of museums in India. Um, I know this must be accessible. So that is one thing. Other thing is that even our internal team also, like you know, when they are uh, meeting every day, are uh, different kind of people with disabilities, you know, uh, uh, taking them around, you know, talking to them about this exhibition. Even internal teams or staff also started thinking about accessibility very seriously, and they keep on coming and saying, Salish, what is next? What is next accessibility feature? What 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 can we do better for this exhibition? This is what the we say yes, uh, make it accessible, but internally how we also can think of making these spaces accessible. So uh, that is when I think uh, uh, we can uh, uh, be very um, you know, inclusive space. And point to architect, I think many of the uh, uh, speakers already pointed out many points. Some of the things, as I mentioned in the beginning, like when you start uh, thinking the about the process yeah, itself, process itself you know that accessibility and inclusion has to be one of the point, one of the you know compulsory point, um, so that you know the space will be accessible, so no one will be left out, uh, you know, outside. So that that's all the points. I Thank have. you. Thanks.